Um, one of the great things about South Africa is that it is so beautiful. And um, I've travelled extensively all over the world, and I still love South Africa the best. Um, and one of the most beautiful routes of all is the gar what's called the Garden Route, which um, is from Cape Town up the east coast along the Indian Ocean um, up to Port Elizabeth and then on to Durban. And there's two climate changes along the way. Um, so Durban is always like, almost like an equator um, climate. It's always warm in Durban. And Cape Town is more, um, it's more sort of almost European, the climate in, in Cape Town, except the summers are longer and hotter, of course. But, um, uh, and, and, and as you travel up the coast, the, the temperature sort of gradually changes to, as you get ne nearer to Durban. But the scenery is absolutely spectacular along that route. And if you ever get the opportunity <coughs> to go along the garden route, do it. It's just amazing. So I'm going to, uh, we, we did the journey uh, Dave was performing in Grahamstown. Um, they have a big festival there every year, uh, a theatre festival, and, and it had started before we got there, uh, with all these theatre groups from all over the country showcasing. And it's still going on, you know. I was invited to it um, when I was in South Africa this time. Um, and um, so we took our old battered beetle, and Pascal was in the back, and age three, and we didn't have seat belts in those days. <laughs> but she was a great traveller, and she never got car sick. Um, so I'll read you an extract from that. A cool mist hung over everything, like layers of cotton wool flattening out the, the hills. We, we'd, we'd left at Cape Town at 6 a.m. As we got further from Cape Town towards the wine valleys of Paal, the sun was beginning to burn away the mist, but only on the tops of the hills. The old blue beetle would crest a hill into bright sunlight, and the view to the horizon was of peaks poking out through the thick white haze. Each hill was covered in green. Winter in the Cape is the green season due to the frequent rain, and swathes of yellow wildflowers were interspersed with pink proteus and red hot pokers, or cactus, cactus plants with tall red flowers. The air smelt clean and fresh, and there was little traffic. For a while, it was like a switchback ride. Gradually, the sun burned away more mist until it was all gone. It rose high in a deep blue sky, and by 11 a.m., the air was hot and still, and we were all getting thirsty. We'd left the wine valleys behind now and had climbed onto a flat plateau which stretched ahead for miles. Occasionally it broke into a deep cut slashed through the plateau and we'd drive across a strutted wooden bridge with huge rocky drops on either side. The scenery was spectacular. In the distance, like a mirage, we saw a roadside stall and a hand-painted sign. Fresh pineapple juice. We pulled to a halt in a cloud of dust and I jumped out. A tall, handsome black woman wearing a turban-like head wrap and a yellow and orange printed cloth tied above her bust stood under a small rickety wooden shelter. It was hot, very hot. There was no other shade around except under the small shelter. I asked her how much, and she said 10 cents. I bought three tall glasses of crushed pineapple and ice. We all got out of the car, stretched and lolled about in the heat, quenching our thirst. It was utterly delicious. We thanked her. Danke, danke. She spoke no English. Out here in the rural hinterland of the Eastern Cape, 
there was no call for English. Then we set off again quickly in a trail of dust. It was too hot to hang around. By late afternoon, we'd reached Hermanus. We couldn't stop those. We wanted to get as far as possible by dark. Now billowing grey clouds had pulled across the sun, covering the blue sky, although the temperature still felt hot and humid. As we drove past Hermanus town, through the trees along the long coastal road, we glimpsed the ocean a vast sweeping bay where whales come to spawn and great slate grey rollers were in constant motion under the darkening sky. We pressed on. The road took us left now, away from the sea, heading to Swellendam before curling back to the coast and Mosel Bay. We skirted George and then there was Noisna. As we came over the top of the hill, the sun came out again, and the scene in front of us made me catch my breath. A huge lagoon, like a vast lake, lay at the bottom of the hill in a beautiful bowl-shaped valley full of trees and greenery dotted with houses around the water's edge. I studied the maps, and it appeared that a small gap in the high rocky crags on the other side of the lagoon let in the seas from the Indian Ocean beyond. The road we were on wound down the hillside and then straight out over a long, narrow, flat bridge across the lagoon before it rose up a steep hillside. We so wanted to stop and look. The blue, the blue again sky was reflected in the calm lake on either side of us as we crossed the bridge. It was stunning but time was short. We passed Plettenberg Bay and then the road wound away from the coast through a forested area. We began to see road signs for the Tsitsikama Forest. So that was a little part of the garden route. And um, yeah, if you ever get the chance, go there. And then the last thing I was going to do was, oh uh, no, not that, I've done that. I'll read to you about Tommy. Um, yeah, there he is, that's going a bit back. Um, yeah, I might as well just read it because it tells who Tommy is. Uh, we were, I was in the suburbs by then. Um, yeah. No, it must have been in our first house, yes. In our first house, and it had the little patio with the avocado tree in the patio. It was hot the day Tommy showed up that first time. The sun was a white hot ball in a metallic blue sky. Pass was at nursery, Dave was doing a radio play, and I was in the bathroom, bending over the bath which contained all the week's wash, jeans, shorts, t-shirts, etc. We had no washing machine and no means of paying for one, so I bought Sunlight Soap, a large square green bar which smelt of carbolic. Then I scrubbed and rubbed with soap each item, then rinsed and rinsed. My back would be aching by the time all the washing was hanging on the line in the yard. It was so hot that they'd all be dry within an hour. On this occasion, I took a break in the middle as I was so hot, strolling into the kitchen and taking some lemon squash from the fridge to make myself a drink. I glanced up as the gate creaked and Angel, our dog, started barking. There he was, all five foot two inches of him, the hump on his back was pronounced. When he turned to close the, the gate behind him, he turned his whole body. As he approached my door, I saw the bright, inquisitive look on his lively, dark face. It did not require sympathy. Can I have uh, a glass of water, madam? His voice was surprisingly deep. Of course, I grabbed Angel's collar. She was growling. 
and asked him to wait a minute as I shut her in the backyard. Come in and sit at the table. I made him the usual doorstep cheese and tomato sandwich. Hospitality, taking care of visitors, were part of the training by my Irish grandmother. It just never occurred to her that guests were not only given a drink, preferably tea, but something substantial to eat too. Soon, Tommy was chatting away between gulps of lemon squash and chunks of sandwich. For me, it was a welcome break from the routine, the clothes washing, the chores, and good to have some adult conversation. The disparity in our circumstances was never referred to directly by Tommy. Much later, I discovered that he lived at a squatter camp called Crossroads. What I did know was that I was drawn to his intelligence and energy and he became a regular visitor. We could talk for hours about any subject, politics, religion. We both had strong opinions and I learnt much from Tommy. Maybe we were both lonely in, the, in our different ways, needing company. It was his contention that most black people in the north of the country at least grew up hating whites. Perhaps it was naivety on my part, but I was shocked by this. Not surprised, but shocked. It felt so depressing to be part of a group so hated. Yet strangely, here we were, Tommy and I, one black, one white, standing outside this situation and talking about it as observers, not participants in this great divide. The outside world did come in and slap us back to reality from time to time, though. One time he turned up and um, the beaches and the pools and everything else was segregated um, in South Africa. Hotels, park benches even, everything was segregated. Um, Tommy turned up unexpectedly. Pass and her little blonde friend Caroline were with me and I promised to take them to the swimming pool near Rondebosch. The pool was a public one, set in gardens, and I sometimes took the kids for a picnic there. But I also knew that it was for whites only, because there was a sign near the entrance saying so. This was an awkward situation, but I had to just come out and say it. Tommy, we're going out to the pool near Rondebosch, sorry, can I come too? In my head, I pictured the heads turning at the pool, all staring at this strange little group. How the girls might feel. What would happen if some official came up and demanded that Tommy leave? How would that make Tommy feel? How I would feel? Very angry, mostly. Our little picnic outing would turn into a great, huge scene. No, no, I couldn't face it. Embarrassed, I told him about the policy and the sign. So what? he said angrily. I sighed inwardly. Look, Tommy, I don't like it either. But, I hadn't pro I, but if I hadn't promised the girls to go, we could do something else. But they're really looking forward to a swim in the pool. I'll see you another day. I can take you with us there. I can't, I can't take you with us there. The reality was that there was nowhere I could take Tommy as an equal, not to beaches or any public area, not to most of the Brooksfield that's the nursery school parents' places. The best place to spend time with Tommy was in my own home. I gave Tommy a drink and a sandwich in his hand that day and went off with the <coughs> girls in our little blue Volkswagen. Sitting there by the pool under my beach umbrella, I looked around at the well-kept lawns, the well-spaced groups, and felt sad, terribly sad, that Tommy couldn't be with us.